Three Souls by J.C.K. Du Looking back, I never imagined their lives having such an impact on me. Or, how our lives were going to impact the world. And how exhausting it all was. How impossible. I almost wonder if it was all worth it. If everything would have been better without us. If the world would have been better off without us. If we would have been better off choosing different paths than the ones we lived. They probably would have died sooner and not left nearly as much behind. Maybe I would have died and not been the only one left. Their souls, these memories, are a cold comfort. Chapter 1 Alexa Brenner Sick, fulfilling pleasure creeps into Darius' features. My boyfriend appears devilish and somewhat wicked. Piercing blue eyes lock onto his next victim. The warmth on my shoulders fades as Darius stalks the oblivious boy. Matt doesn't notice Darius until after he speaks. Jumping up and away from the sudden sound. Hey Maddie, where are you going? Darius turns Matt sharply, his well-built body easily overpowers the smaller boy. We haven't seen each other for a while and I think you're trying to avoid me. The intimidating male stands directly in front of Matt, their bodies almost touching. Matt tries to say something, but my boyfriend's actions are working well to overwhelm his ability to run away or work his mouth properly. He gapes for a few moments before Matt finally comes up with enough courage to speak. His voice catches in his throat. And no, I'm not. I'm bored of this display of dominance but won't do anything to prevent, deter, or stop it. I wouldn't dare try. Why don't I believe you? You see, his voice deepens as he goes on, I don't think you enjoy our little visits anymore. And I don't like that. These interactions have been going on since before I've known Darius. Darius roughly shoves Matt into the brick wall. I cringe inwardly as he winces. His back is likely getting scratched up from the brick. Coach Renner chooses the right, or rather wrong, moment to come through the school's doors. He immediately recognizes the scene. I take the few steps needed to reach them and tap on Darius' shoulder. Catching his attention, I nod towards the approaching coach. He loosens his grip enough for Matt to free himself and run away. Coach Renner's movements hesitate slightly as Darius turns to square up towards the approaching coach. The all-around coach of the small high school is, and rightly so, nervous around my boyfriend. Darius holds an air of danger around him that can intimidate anyone trying to oppose him. It helps that he towers over most and is built like a tank. Though I've only known him a couple of months, I've gathered that one goes against him, that was part of what had drawn me to him in the first place. Nothing and no one can get in my way or tell me what I have to do when I have him backing me up. J. Johnston Brenner? What do you think you're doing? His voice cracks in the beginning, but remains authoritative for the remainder. Coach Renner's familiar look, of something between disapproval and fear, stays through his walk to us. You're going to risk tonight on this. You're lucky I'm the one that caught you. Don't pull any more of this shit and get to the locker room. Now. While he smirks at Coach Renner, Darius grabs my hand to escort me inside the school. Coach jogs in the direction Matt went. I bet he's going to do damage control to ensure his quarterback can still play tonight. A slight tug pulls my attention back to Darius. He leads me into the school and guides me away from the dwindling crowds and the halls. I follow him the opposite way we should be going to tuck underneath a tucked away stairwell. I let myself be turned and pushed into the wall. My eyes close instinctively as his lips cover mine, moving in harsh movements. I allow him to do as he pleases, wrapping my arms around his neck for support. He controls the moment. The back of my head hits the wall as Darius forces his way into my mouth. I play with him a bit by rubbing my tongue against his. Moaning quietly as a heated bubbling grows inside me from the feeling of his hand sliding up my shirt, rubbing against my side. 
The bell's shrill ringing barely registers in my head until, with one last forceful move of his lips, he pulls away and looks into my eyes. He pecks my forehead. Nails run along my side as Darius pulls his hand out of my shirt. Opening my eyes, I find a lust-filled stare aimed at me. His hungered look unnerves me in some ways but in others makes me feel wanted, special. The tux adds an extra level of dashing intensity. Let's go. Immediately, the cool wall on my back and the warmth from his body dissipates, as each is removed completely. Darius leads me to the boys' locker room. His teammates are audible from down the hall. Their hoots and hollers echo in the empty hallway until metal clicks against metal. Multiple male voices sound like nothing more than loud mutters from behind the closed door. Only every odd word can be made out as someone shouts out above the rest. I hear the hard click of the door opening before I can see the movement of it. Miles' familiar face peeks around from behind the door. His natural smile changes slightly as a small twitch-like grin appears for only a moment when he spots us coming. His pointed looks, though intense, have a caring and comforting feeling to them. Miles opens the door enough for him to slip through, and then holds it open for Shale. Once they both are through the door, Shale lets it shut, with the same harsh click, and stands to the side. They've already changed out of their suits and into their gear. What took so long? A slight knowing creeps into Shale's brown eyes. I ignore him in favor of the other one. Miles has the decency to ignore the obvious and me. Coach decided to try to give us trouble for talking with Maddie. Shale nods slightly. Understanding the undertones after Darius' trademark devilish grin appears. I've got to get ready. He turns his attention back to me. The arm around my waist tightens and pulls me against his broad chest. Darius' gaze holds me as he leans down for another hard kiss. My eyes close from impact. It ends quickly and his arms release my waist. Opening my eyes, I find an empty space where he had stood only a moment ago. I watch as he and Shale disappear into the change room. Alexa, how are you? Miles' smooth, quiet voice calls me. Turning naturally at the sound of my name, I notice the concerned look on Miles' face. It takes a moment before I remember he asked a question. Giving him a hard look, I answer while ignoring what I know he actually meant. I'm fine, Miles. I'll see you at the game. The slight nod of his head signals his acceptance. With one last glance at me, then he turns for the locker room door. Muffled noises roar, then go quiet once more. The stillness of the hallway is discomforting. Turning on my heel, I hurry to the football field. People have already started gathering for the final game of the year. This crucial game is not only for the first place position in the division, but also the bragging rights over the long-running school rivalry between the Bears and our Tigers. From what I'm told, it's the talk of the school and the city. I don't get it, but I'm going to support my boyfriend. Our rivals have already started going through their warm-ups, as I walk to my usual spot beside the bleachers. Standing here gives me shade from both sun and wind, while I watch Darius play. I wrap my arms around myself, wishing I had something warmer for the chilled November air. It's going to snow soon, the type of snow that sticks around for the rest of winter. I watch the opposing teams warm up as their coach shouts out commands. Their team barely starts running drills when loud cheers come from our bleachers at the sight of our team coming out of the school. They make a slight production out of the entrance. Our school's mascot follows the train of hoots and hollers of the louder football players. Darius leads everyone onto the field to immediately start the warm-up. Everyone knows the warm-up by heart and flawlessly pulls off every move. The cheers of the crowd encourage them. The warm-ups last until the referee calls the captains to the middle of the field for a coin toss. Darius and Shale win the toss and get to pick starting sides. Darius looks for me on the way back. He waves once before his attention returns to the team and game. Huddle. His loud voice calls to his teammates to gather. 
Coach Renner gives a small talk to the team before they all yell, Tigers! The team breaks off into two groups, one walks back to the bench, while the other jogs out to their predetermined spots on the field. People have been looking forward to this all week, half the school has shown up to watch. Pep rallies and posters have plagued all the students, so it's no wonder everyone is here. Everything goes quiet, until a kick signals game start. Both teams look evenly matched, not that I would ever say that to Darius. Neither team is willing to let the other score points as the first, second, and third quarters pass with no touchdowns. As a player and fanatic, the game would be a harrowing experience. As someone here to support a boyfriend and his friends, the lack of major action is boring. With time almost out, Darius gets the ball. He scans the field but no one looks open. He throws high into the air. Out of nowhere, Shale exits the mess of players and grabs the ball. The Bears react quickly. Shale passes the ball behind to Miles then turns into a moving shield, until Miles grows an unrecoverable lead. Right before the end zone, his sudden stop becomes the start of a suspenseful and confused silence. Unfazed by the silence of the crowd and the players running to take him out, Miles stands just before the line. A realization comes to mind. My eyes wander to the clock. Three. Two. One. An eruption of cheers turns my attention. Miles waited for the time to run out to step over the line. His hesitation to cross into the end zone gives no chance for the other team to score. Miles' touchdown will be the cause of the entire year's bragging rights and embarrassment of the Bears. People practically leap over each other to congratulate the team in all of the excitement. In all of the chaos, I lose sight of the three guys. I raise myself on my toes, uselessly trying to get a better view. The referee blows his whistle to try to calm the mass of people. The crowd is instructed back to the bleachers so the teams can receive their medals. Both teams find their way to the center of the field, only one team bursts with excitement while the other is solemn. As the referee gives out the medals, an uneasy feeling comes over me. All my attention is drawn to a tall man beside me. An icicle draws up my spine in fear of this stranger. I move myself to the seat side to put a railing between us. The trophy is passed around the team. Once they are finished celebrating together, all the players head back to get congratulated by friends and family. I wait for Darius, but he meets up with the tall stranger. Curiosity pulls me closer. I quickly try to examine the male from behind. Everything in the man's clothing speaks of importance, from the black dress pants and shoes, the white button-up shirt, and the black sports jacket held in his arm. Everything about his posture and the way he holds himself speaks to his superiority. I still can't shake the awful feeling he gave off. The conversation between this man and my boyfriend looks to be one of business, rather than a social call. Darius has his helmet off. I can see his frown and furrowed brow. My ears trick me as I approach. The distance between them and me is close enough that I should be hearing something, yet not a sound reaches me. What would they need to talk about in such a hushed way? The stranger's back visibly tenses as I approach. He turns and looks through me. Darius finishes moving his mouth. He looks from the man to me and back again. Darius surges forward and around the man. He turns me around quickly before pulling me with him. His arm around my shoulders keeps me from looking back. Chills creep up my spine. I know the man is staring at our backs as Darius quickly takes me away. Looking up at Darius, I study his expression. The glare is still on his face. The man's reaction to me has riled Darius up enough for his eyes to hold anger. Maybe that's his abusive father. It would explain everything. I don't voice the thought. I don't think now is the right time. Darius' tensed muscles relax the further he hurries us away from the man, but the vice grip he has doesn't loosen. Darius pulls me outside the locker room so he can change. This time a different mood is created within the empty halls. 
The hallway seems to hold a slight bit of danger that wasn't there the prior visit. Jerking open the door, Darius bursts into the room, the impending danger looks me in the face. His sharp features crease with anger. The attractiveness I typically find in him is gone. He turns me around and pulls me in a smooth motion. Whatever he and the strange man talked about was something bad enough to change his mood drastically. A shiver travels up my spine, my body tenses and relaxes as the jolt reaches my shoulders. It's not too unusual of a spasm after being outside so long in this cool fall weather, the more unusual is the cause of my shiver. Darius' arm around my waist is strangely cold, after the kind of activity he just finished. Miles passes us as we walk through the main doors. He hesitates for a moment as he looks like he wants to intervene. Darius cuts his look with one of his own. In spoken words go around me, just out of my grasp and understanding. I know I'm missing something important. Hoots hollers and honks fill the air in celebration, a clear result of the win. Vehicles slowly inch out of the parking lot as they avoid other vehicles and people. The stop sign is largely ignored by those speeding out to the main road. The cold arm wrapped around me disappears as we reach the running black Ford truck, my cue to go to the passenger seat. The leather seat is hot to the touch. Warmth quickly seeps through my clothes, warming me from Darius' cold touch. Darius turns the key and hits the gear shift with jolted movements. He white knuckles the steering wheel. I buckle in the moment the truck starts lurching as he makes quick starts and stops. The engine growls loud from the exertion. Once we leave the parking lot, Darius wastes no time picking up speed to drive down the long stretch of road. Darius cuts a couple of vehicles off. They honk their annoyance. I just hope the way is clear of police. The usual 10-minute drive only takes half the time. He rushes into the garage, managing not to hit anything as he skids to a stop. Cutting the engine, the blonde hits the button to close the door. Apprehension runs through my spine as we leave the truck. The slight noise the door makes when I close it is nothing compared to the loud slam of the driver's side door. Looking over the hood, I see Darius' head coming around the front. He wraps his arm around me without stopping or slowing his pace and opens the door for us. I feel almost like I'm a captive as he gently shoves me through the opening and by the firm grip of his hand that stays on my shoulder. Not one moment through the door, a cooled body covers my back while pushing me face first into an equally cold wall. A jolt races up my spine at the same speed a knot clenches and releases in my stomach. One large hand buries itself through my hair before pulling tight. He pulls at my hair to bring my head to the side. The freshly exposed skin raises with goosebumps as cool puffs of Darius' breath caress the area. He alternates between firm lips traveling, of teeth gently scraping, and of his wet tongue lapping at my skin. The sensations inside me twist between pleasure, pain, and fear. Darius moves his other hand from its resting place of my hip, slowly up my torso and under my shirt. Electric tingles follow his hand. My hands rest tense against the wall. Hastily, I raise my arm, quickly dismissing the feeling of something rubbing against my forearm, to wrap around the back of his head. As I bring his head closer, I feel a slight curl in his lips. A different sort of electricity fills the air, soaking in the moment as the intensity rises. His body pauses, tense for a moment before his lips and teeth descend on my neck again, rougher this time. His teeth latch as he quickly bites harder. The delicious painful pleasure quickly turns into just pain. A slight cry escapes my throat as my body tenses reflexively. White hot panic engulfs me. I need to get off this wall. His grasp is too strong. Pushing and twisting are useless. He's too strong. Darius. This hurts. I tell him. He doesn't let up. A ringing starts in my ears. My heart clenches. Gasping for breath is a laborious activity. Darius stops in a frozen grip. I let down my arm and rest it in front of me on the wall. 
His chest rising and falling with his quick breathing is the only sign that he hasn't completely frozen in time. Moments feel like hours until he moves, lessening his grip on my hair and slowly bringing his hand out from underneath my shirt. The ringing in my ears stops just as suddenly as it started. A new sound reaches my ears. Whipping my head to the side I see Shale in the entrance of the hallway, still dressed in his football gear, minus the helmet. Downstairs. Shale's tone says the rest of the sentence for him, his hard stare is fixed on Darius. A quick, sharp breath is released from the male behind me, his hatred to the order clear. Shale takes no notice, however, as he turns on his heels and quietly leaves. Wait here. Darius' voice is rough and hoarse. I have no interest in the wrath of this angered man. I nod my head once, turning around to look at him. When angered, Darius has a wild, uncontrolled sense about his whole persona that isn't there normally. His shoulders are set back, his dominant presence is almost overbearing and his stoic features set on the spot Shale just left. Darius doesn't look at me before following Shale to the basement. Tension releases as he leaves. I rest against the wall. Resisting the urge to fall to the floor. I close my eyes and concentrate on controlling my breathing. The air clears of its thickness and my lungs receive their proper oxygen. My fevered skin cools as my heart slows down. I wait through moments before opening my eyes. Wiping tears away. My heart has somewhat calmed and my head clears, as I can move my now functioning body off of the wall and fully onto my feet. Various words override any notion of moving from this spot. Goosebumps creep their way down the lengths of my arms as the air feels warmer. I rub my palms against the skin of my upper arms. A low growling of an engine tickles my eardrums. Another vehicle is pulling into the garage just as abruptly as Darius' truck had pulled in. Not a second later the engine is cut and barely a moment after a door is slammed. Miles hastily barrels into the room, still dressed in his football gear. I take in his worried expression. He looks me over before relief flashes in his emerald eyes. Move, Kelly's voice demands right before Miles stumbles forward. Quickly, he regains his balance. The taller girl is now in the doorway. She smiles as she spots me against the wall. She rushes over to me, quickly grabbing my wrist. Good, you're here. You can help me. The boys want barbecue tonight. Kelly drags me away before I can get out a word. She pulls me down the hallway, through the lower living room, up a couple of stair steps and straight into the kitchen. Darius will forgive me for leaving the spot so I can help set up supper. I hope. Letting go of my wrist, Kelly opens one half of the fridge. We pull out everything we need for tonight and pack them into a couple of coolers. I open the sliding patio door and walk out onto the deck. The sun's heat instantly warms my skin, even in the cool air. There is no wind here to make it colder, which makes it bearable. Kelly comes out carrying a glass bottle drink I recognize from a couple of times I have drunk with this group. The label is decorated in a set of lines and curves in an alternate of red and black. The label on the side reads Fekit Veer in an old, gothic style of writing. I haven't tried it yet, maybe I will tonight. I walk closer to her. She stands there with her eyes closed for a moment before she looks towards the sun, her hand shielding her eyes. For a moment the sun reflects in her eyes giving her light blue eyes a silver glow. She looks at me smiling, her normal mischievous grin before I realize she isn't quite looking straight at me, but slightly over my shoulder. I turn to follow her gaze. The three guys have come from around the side of the house, each carrying various items, and are headed towards us. Miles and Shale are no longer dressed in their football gear. Both have changed into their regular style of clothing. Shale's long black hair is pulled back into a low ponytail, out of the braids worn for football. Shale and Darius go straight to the barbecue. They busy themselves with getting the grill going and the food cooking. Meanwhile, Miles sets up the table with the fixings needed for the hamburgers and a couple of different store-bought salads. 
Kelly gets a fire started with wood and gasoline. She lights a match and tosses it in. In a whoosh, the gasoline lights up and disappears. I'm sure if I looked into the pit there would be some flame on the wood. The tall girl saunters over to her boyfriend, giving him a quick peck on the lips before she looks at the table. Walking over there myself, I nod a greeting to Miles. Gazing back over to Kelly, she has her eyes on the table. Miles. Her strong voice catches his immediate attention. You're missing a few things. You don't have the utensils yet, and what about the spoons for the salads? You should have brought everything out at the same time. It would have saved you a trip and time. Miles nods his head once before retreating into the house. Not worth the argument. Kelly turns to me. I don't know how many times I have to tell that boy. You can get so much more done in a day if you don't have to spend the time doing things twice, when you could very well do it only once. He's always walking to and from places more than necessary. She barely pauses with a quick breath. Oh, did you see Carla's new haircut today? What was she thinking? That haircut is atrocious. Kelly continues talking about the daily gossip, about anything and everything going on. Miles comes back as I start to drone out what Kelly is talking about. As he sets the utensils on the table, I help him open the containers, letting Kelly believe she still has my attention by nodding and humming every so often. A familiar hand settles itself on my shoulder slightly gripping and releasing. While Kelly as interesting as this conversation is, I need to steal Alexa for a moment. I need help with something. He doesn't wait for an answer. Darius grips my shoulder slightly to guide me into the house. Dropping his hand, he follows me through the door. What did you need help with? I ask him. I can't find the bottle opener. Nodding, I start looking through the usual places for the bottle opener, the utensil drawer, the side of the fridge, and the drawer beside the sink. My search there is empty-handed. Darius looks through some of the other drawers, while I look through some of the organizational holders on the countertop. I watch him. Waiting for an apology, some mention to what happened earlier or why that man pissed him off, but he doesn't speak. He pretends that everything is normal. I wonder if I should bring it up. Continuing my search, I move into the front room. A first glance search to the spotless room tells me it won't be in there. Found it. The voice suddenly almost frighteningly appears in my ear. Even though I didn't jump, my heart races at the unexpected appearance of my boyfriend. Where was it? I ask him as I turn to face him. In one of the drawers. Darius holds up the bottle opener on his finger by the little chain attached to its sides. One of his warm hands grabs mine. Pulling me closer, he rests the hand holding the keychain on my hip. Letting go of my hand, he slowly slides his own down my arm and my side to sit mirroring his other hand. I look into his face and his eyes, and then he closes the distance between us. His tongue compels my lips to open almost immediately and enters my mouth. His warm tongue plays with mine for a moment and moves to explore the rest of my mouth. Darius' hands travel slowly, massaging across the small of my back then lower to grope my butt. His right hand jumps to the back of my neck. Simultaneously, his hold tightens, crushing me to him in one swift movement. Harsh kisses feel bruising as he allows no room to back away. He controls my movements, my body moves to his wants, rather than to my mind. The tight hold tenses and clenches for one last, drawn-out moment. Darius parts his mouth from mine and loosens his hold only enough for me to look him in the face again. His gaze pierces into me. Let's go. The stakes should be about done. Letting go of me and taking a step back, he then holds out his hand. Taking the offer, I grip his hand as we walk back outside. Shale has four steaks off the grill. The last one he takes off and puts it on a plate, mine devoid of any hint of red meat. Giving the plate to me, he grabs his own from the side of the barbecue and goes to sit down. I let go of Darius' hand and head over to the table instead, 
I pick up a set of utensils and look over at Miles as he scoops himself a spoonful of the potato and egg salad. I help myself to the other salad as I wait for him to finish. Putting the spoon back when I finish, I look up to Miles who is patiently waiting for his turn. Walking behind him, I switch him places to get some of the other salad. Once we are both finished, I follow him back to the three lawn chairs. Miles sits down behind Kelly on the one, as Shale sits on the second one and Darius occupies the last one. When I settle, Darius hands me an already opened bottle of liquor, a lemon-flavored vodka cooler. I notice an already empty bottle of the Fekit Veer beside him on the arm of the chair, as well as one by Shale and Kelly. I wish he had opened one of those for me instead. I take one gulp of the vodka drink inside. The familiar warmth almost burns down my throat, while a tingle runs through the back of my nose.